Welcome once again to Taxonomy Online Mathematics, the easy way to learn and relearn mathematics. Today we are continuing with our algebraic expression. We have so many tutorials on algebraic expression. This being almost the last aspect of an algebraic expression, factorization of difference or fourth two squares. Now, if we want to employ the principle of a square, as in, we know a square has all the sides being equal. So if I have a square of side A, meaning all the sides are going to be what? A. So if I'm looking for the area of this square, the area is just going to be the A times A, that will be A squared. Now, if we cut out another square from this particular square, let's say we cut out this part, which is also a square. So if it is a square, it needs a dimension. So let's say we cut out a square of dimension B. Meaning here is B, here will be B, this area will be B, and this is also the B. We cut out, meaning we have taken out this area. Good. If I'm looking for area, let me use B. Let me use A. Area of the small uh, square that is being taken out. Obviously, our area of the small square is going to be length times length, which is going to be what? Square. Beautiful. Now, we have taken out this. This is being taken out. So if I want to reconstruct this to resemble a two-dimensional figure, we know that this is what I'll get. So if I cut out this area, you know, this is just a portion of this. If I remove that portion, don't forget, whatever is taken off is what is taken off from here. So it's the same dimension. So if I take away this and add it to this place, before I go, if I'm removing this part away, then the remaining part is no more going to be A. It's going to be A, which is the original side, minus the part that I'm taking away, which is what? B. The part that is left is going to be the original dimension A, minus the small portion that has been taken away. So if I want to redraw that diagram, it will look like this. This area or this length, which is A minus B, the one that I am taking away, I am bringing it, this one, with the length coming down to meet this area, whereby this is still the same as this. Don't forget, the dimension A is still what? A. From here to here has not been reduced. We only increase this length. We are taking, let me take it this way. This is a right angle. So if the length, which is the breadth here, is placed here, then the length will fall on this. This dimension will fall here. We do not become the, the length A minus B here. So if I am looking for this, this become, all of this become A plus what? B. So if I want to find the area of this, knowing the length and what? The breadth, or better still, the breadth and the length. Area of C is going to be length A minus B times breadth A plus what? B. That is this value. That is the area of the restructured diagram. Don't forget, in this case, we have taken away the square with the length B away. So if I've taken away this, what is left is going to be the area of the bigger part, which is the A minus the AA. That is A squared. The bigger square we have is A squared. The one I have taken away is A uh, B squared. So the remaining area is going to be A squared minus what? B squared. The original area of the square is A squared minus the part that I have taken away to give me what is left. And what is left is reconstructed to form this. So it means this area is the same as this area. What I mean is that the A area here, which is A squared minus B squared, 
is the same thing as what? A minus B, A plus what? B. So this expression we are having here is what we call difference of two squares. Don't forget, the first one was a square. The difference between the first square and the second square give us A square minus B square. If you restructure this diagram to form this, the area of this will also mean the A minus B times A plus B. So when we have any expression, any expression, so any expression, that is algebraic expression, in the form A squared minus B squared is equals to A minus B in one bracket, A plus B in one bracket is called a difference of two squares or difference of squares now bear in mind that multiplication is commutative so this could also mean a square b square a plus b a minus b the order which one can first will not be a problem because here i will decide to say this is my length so a plus b times this so i will also like to take this part multiplying this part so the order should not be a problem. So this is an algebraic expression of the form difference of two squared. So you can be asked to find, let's say, you can be asked to factorize this. This is what? 4a squared minus what? m squared. I can see from here that there's a difference. I can see square. I can see square. And I know perfectly that what 4 is a perfect square. So I can rewrite this to be 2 square and square like this. But don't forget, under indices, these two will be in a bracket to mean the same thing. Minus m what? Square. So if this is given to me, this is the first square, the second square. Their difference become 2m being 2n being the first a minus b times 2n plus what m so simple like that so if we can rewrite this to mean this or we can factorize this expression to become this i believe you get a concept the beginning is just an illustration to how we arrive at a square minus b square which will give us the value of a minus b times a plus what b if that is out of the way let's see if i have very simple thing like x squared minus 9 factorize x squared minus what 9 i can see that the first term is x but squared the second term is 9 it's not squared but can i break the 9 to become perfect squared Yes, 3 squared gives me what? 9. So I'll rewrite this to become x squared, 3 squared. Then that is in this form. So the answer is just going to be x plus 3, x minus 3. I believe you are on the same page with me, right? So we only look out for the variables that will be a perfect square. If I have that. Now, what if we take it a step further to say we are to factorize 5 minus 20y squared? We are under factorization. Looking at a common factor. Good. 5 is in the lowest term. We cannot be able to write a factor different from uh, 5 to be squared to give us 5. So I will look at do I have a common factor? Of 5 in 20. I believe that to be 5. So that to be 5 into bracket. 5 divided by 5 is what? 1. 20 divided by 5 is what? 4. Then y square will come. In some cases, I will have leave my answer this way. But I will look into the bracket and say, I can see that 4 is a perfect square. Where y is also squared. And I know 1 can be expressed as a perfect square. 1 squared is always 1. So, this becomes 5 still outside. 1 squared minus 2y 
all one square. Do you get that concept? The four is a perfect square. So two square y square. It become two y all square indices. The power can be distributed on the two terms all day. One square still remain what? One. So we have not changed the question. So now the inside bracket can be expressed in this form, making five outside, then one minus two y in one bracket, multiplying one plus two y in another bracket. I have to close this bracket, so let me use the bigger bracket to mean this. So five is multiplying the product of the two brackets. Are you the same page with me? Good. Then let's take it a step further with another example. So look at the first one. 9x squared minus 16y squared. So at this point, you know that 9 is a perfect square of 3. Then 16 is a perfect square of what? 4. So we can rewrite this. We can rewrite this to be 3x all squared minus what? 16 become 4y all squared. I believe you agree with me that 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16. So this becomes difference of 2 squared. So I only have the first term 3x plus 4y, 3x minus what? 4y mean my final complete word factorization so this become the answer the second one is t exponent 4 minus what 16 if i look at t exponent 4 yes it is having a power of 4 so it looks not to be a square but the 4 there is also a perfect square meaning the exponent can be break into indices to mean t exponent 2 exponent 2. So that could also give me by 4. Then looking at the 16, it's also a perfect square of 4. So I can rewrite this as in t square all square. I believe you get that. That will give me 4 square. t square square give you t exponent 4. 4 square will give you a 16. So this, it becomes difference of 2 squared. t squared plus 4. t squared minus what? 4. As our final answer. I can see at this point, you are nodding your head that this is not as difficult as you are thinking. So if I allow you to pause the video and solve number 3, it will not be a problem, right? If you pause the video at this point to solve number 3, you will not have a problem because... 4 is a perfect square. This is already a perfect square. 25 is also a perfect square. So in this case, I have 2x all square to mean the first one minus 5 square into bracket a minus b square. That will give me the 25 this. So I'll only put this. Let me use a different bracket to mean that. So I put square there. Don't forget, it is still a square, whether it has uh, binomial or not. It is still a square. So this all square, this square, difference between the two square will give us our 2x minus 5a minus b in one bracket. Then in the next bracket, 2x plus 5a minus what? b. To mean my final answer. But don't forget there is a bracket within the bracket. So we can break the one in the bracket. So I will have 2x. If you expand the one in the bracket. Negative 5 times a. Give you 5a. Negative 5 times negative b. Give you what? Plus 5b. In this bracket. That is the first bracket. Then the second bracket will come, permit me to put it here. That is going to be 2x positive 5, so plus 5a plus 5b. So this bracket multiplying this is the actual answer. 
because this one involves a bracket within a bracket. Right? Good. So, as at this point, if you have no question, I believe you can also solve the number four. Right? Looking at it from the angle, we solve the number two. One can be expressed as a perfect square, and it can also be breaking into n to the power 3, the power 2. Good. If you have that in mind, then let's do it together. This is going to be 1 squared minus n to the power 3, or 1 squared. I believe that is what you got, right? No problem. It becomes a difference of 2 squared. So what do we do? We take the first one, 1, then minus n to the power 3, 1 plus n to the power what? 3. So that part is being cut off to 1. So this will be the answer that you get. Since this is the first term, second term, the first term minus the second term times first term plus the second term. I believe at this point, you have no doubt in your mind that you can solve difference of 2 squared. That simply means that the number 5 will not be a problem for you. I believe so. Number 5 will not be a problem. Looking at it, 27 is not a perfect square. So, right away, no idea of difference of 2 square. 12 is also not a perfect square. So, there is no way I can break 27 and 12 to get a perfect square. So, I go straight to my factorization, common factor. 27 and 12 have a common factor of 3. So I take that 3 out. Dividing this by 3, I get what? 9x squared. Dividing this by 3, you get 4y squared. So now you can tell yourself that the 1 in a bracket is a difference of 2 squared. No doubt. It's a difference of 2 squared. 3, 2. We can break them. So this is going to be my 3 being left out this bracket will be 3x squared then minus 2y or what square this is what i'll get the 5 the 3 is already outside this 3 is for the 9 and this 2 for the 4 so this becomes difference of 2 square in the bracket so if that is the case I will be able to maintain my 3. This will become 3x plus 2y. 3x minus what? 2y. So your final answer will just be what you are doing. Don't forget, if you expand this, you get back your original question. I did explain in the beginning of the, this topic that opposite of factorization is what? Expansion. So if you expand... You get the equation. If you factorize the equation, you get the expansion. All right. So at this point, I have no doubt that the number six will be easy for you to do. Very very easy. Thirty six p square minus forty nine q square. It will be easy to do. So, per the understanding you have, try to solve this and present your answer in the comment section. Either the answer alone, or take a snapshot. Of the solution and forward it. Let's learn together. Maybe your answer will inspire somebody also to try. You know, mathematics is all about trying or practicing. Let's keep practicing. This still remain taxonomy online mathematics. Please, if this is your first time seeing this video, subscribe to the channel, click on the notification bell so that anytime a video is uploaded, you'll be the first to see it.